Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. I'm Jim Helmer and in this video we're going to be looking at section 5.5, the real zeros of a polynomial function. Uh, this is actually going to be broken into two separate videos, so this is part one. Now what's nice about this section is it actually is going to give us the tools to be able to solve higher ordered polynomials. Up to this point we may have only been working with quadratics. So we're going to actually get the tools to solve higher order polynomials. The first thing we want to look at is division. Because this is a tool that we're going to use to find the factors of higher degree polynomials. Now when we talk about factors, well, I know that 4 is a factor of 24. 4 times 6 is 24, which tells me that 24 is evenly divisible by 4. Well, if I do long division here, 6 factors of 4 is 24. When I do that difference, I have a remainder of 0. So that tells me it's evenly divisible. Well, what if I want to divide 20 by 7? Well, the closest I can get to 20 without going over, kind of like the price is right if you think about it, the highest bid without going over, would be 2 times 7, which is 14. Now, if I find their difference, I see I get 6. Well, 6 is my remainder. Now, if you recall, when you did division way back in grade school, you didn't carry it out into decimals. You wrote it as a remainder. You'd say r of 6. Well, what does that mean? That means 2 plus a remainder of 6 sevenths. 6 remains to be divided by 7, which is why we call it a remainder. It remains to be divided. Now, how, how does this apply to polynomials? Well, what if I want to know if x minus 3 is a factor of this polynomial. We have x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x minus 5. Well, we have what's called the division quotient, which applies to this here. If I have a polynomial divided by a devising polynomial, in this case, this is going to be my d of x, and that's going to be my f of x, it's going to equal a quotient polynomial plus a remaining polynomial over the devising polynomial. Well, if we think about it, that's what happened right here. We took 20, represents our f of x, a number, dividing by its divisor, 7, resulted in a quotient, r2, with a remainder that remained to be divided over the divisor, the remainder over the divisor. So we have to add that quantity. And that's exactly what we saw right here. Well, we can apply this concept to polynomials. Let's do long division of this polynomial. I'm going to divide x minus 3 into this polynomial, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x minus 5. Well, in order to do this, we say, well, what's, what do I have to multiply by x minus 3 to get it as close as possible to this first leading term? Well, I'd have to multiply x by x squared. So let's start right there. And we move over one, just like we did here. Essentially, what we're doing is keeping track of our places. Our, they're placeholders. So if I multiply this now, just like I did here, 2 times 7 was 14. x squared times this quantity is going to give me x cubed minus 3x squared. I just distribute this to this term. Now I find the difference. How close was I? Just like I found the difference here. Now here's where we have to be careful. Because we have more than one term, we have to remember to not make a sign error. We have to distribute that negative as we go through. So I'm going to find the difference, x cubed minus x cubed. That first term went away. Well, that's good. That term went away, right? Or at least the tens place did here. Let's see. We get 0 here. And then we have negative 4x squared minus a negative 3x squared. Well, watch those signs. This actually becomes addition, negative 4x squared plus 3x squared would leave me negative x squared. Now, had this been a longer digit, we would have carried down values as we move. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm bringing down the next value. Just bring it down. Now I'm going to say, well, what do I have to multiply by this x term to make it a negative x squared to match this first term? Well, I'd have to multiply it by a negative x. Negative x times x is negative x squared. And negative x times negative 3 is a positive 3x. Now, I just find the difference. I continue this. This is how we do long division. 
Negative x squared minus a negative x squared, well, that's plus, so that goes away. That first term should always cancel. And then I have 2x minus 3x would leave me with a negative x. And now I bring down that next term, negative 5. Now I continue the division. What do I have to multiply by this x term to get it as close as possible to this? Well, I'd have to multiply it by negative. Well, that's negative 1. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. And then we find the difference. Negative x minus a negative x, that first term goes away. Negative 5 minus a positive 3 is negative 8. Well, that negative 8 is not 0 like it was here when I did the division and I came to the end. There was nothing left to bring down. It was 0. Well, when I did this one, I had a remainder. Well, that's the case here. I have a remainder. So let's kind of review that. It says, is this a factor of this polynomial? If there's a remainder, it's not evenly divisible which means this is not a factor. So our answer is no. But let's continue to write this in the division algorithm here. I have to put the remainder over the divisor, just like I did here. So I have negative 8, so minus 8, over the divising factor, which in this case is x minus 3. So this is my quotient and my remainder right here. That quantity x squared minus x minus 1 minus 8 over x minus 3. All right, let's look at a few more examples. But we're going to look at a different tool that we can use to do division. And that's called synthetic division. Hopefully at some point in your uh, algebra careers you've seen synthetic division. If not, pay really close attention here. To do synthetic division, it's like a shorthand division instead of doing long division. Essentially, what we're going to do here is I'm going to look at this and say, well, this is my divisor. I'm dividing this polynomial by this value. What I want to do is change the sign of what I see in here. And you, if you've been watching my videos, you know that's a recurring theme. I always say it's always the opposite of what you see in these grouping symbols. So I put this value in here. It's always of the form x minus some number, minus c. Well, if that's the case, I just c would be a positive 3. I put that c value in there. Now, to finish the uh, division, I just write the coefficients of my polynomial. The first leading coefficient is 1. The next one is negative 4. The next one is 2. And the last one is negative 5. Make sure your polynomial is in descending order before you apply synthetic division. So now we just set it up. We put in our divisor, our c value, change the sign, bring it down here, and then write the coefficients. Now this is where it becomes relatively simple. Because we already did a change of signs, we don't have to find differences like we did in long division. We've already done a change of signs, so we just have to combine them. Well, the first thing we do is we bring down the first term. Three time, and then we multiply our constant times this value. 3 times 1 is 3. Now let's just combine them. Negative 4 and 3 is negative 1. All right, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Let's combine these. 2 and negative 3 is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 5 and negative 3 is negative 8. This last term, just like uh, in long division, that last value we came where there's nothing left to bring down, that was our remainder. This here is my remainder. And if you notice, it's the same. Well, this was the same polynomial that we just did in the previous example. Now, how do I write this using a division algorithm? Well, if I think about it, I took an x cubed polynomial, and I divided it by an x polynomial. So let's just, for a moment, write that right there. x cubed over x is going to reduce to x squared. That is the degree of this polynomial. And if we think about it, if I were to multiply an x squared polynomial by an x minus 3 polynomial, reverse our division with multiplication, to get this back, it's going to be x cubed, right? So this first term is x squared. This term is x. This is my constant. This, like I said, is the remainder. I can just rewrite this over our divisor, which was x minus 
the C value x minus 3. So this is the exact same answer we got before, but it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. I prefer synthetic division myself because I think there's less chance to make sign errors. You don't have to distribute negatives because you've already changed the sign when you brought it down to here. All right, let's look at another example. Let's do it one more time so we make sure we understand the concept. I want to divide this polynomial 2x cubed minus x squared plus 3 divided by x minus 3. Now, one thing to keep in mind, synthetic division only works when we're dividing by a linear factor, x to the first power, like we have here. Now, my c value, again, is 3. I just change the sign of what I see in there. And then I write the coefficients in descending order. We have 2x cubed. We have a minus 1x squared. We don't have any x to the first power. We have to have a placeholder. It's 0. There are 0 of my x to the first powers. And then we have our constant of 3. So I write my coefficients in descending order. Make sure I put in a 0 for any missing term in descending order. And now we just do what we did before. Bring down that first term. And then multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 1 and 6 is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 0 and 15 is 15. 3 times 15 is 45. 45 and 3 is 48. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we look at what we have here, these numbers 2, 5, 15, and 48, this last digit is my remainder. So I know this wasn't evenly divisible because my remainder is not 0. But what are my powers here? Well, I took a cube term and divided it by x to the first, which leaves me an x to the second polynomial. So x squared is my leading term. And then I just write it in descending order. Leading terms x squared, x constant. This is my remainder. It remains to be divided by this factor, x minus 3. So this is the quotient and remainder of this division. All right, let's do another one. But we're going to look at the ter different terminology here. Sometimes we're going to be asked if something is a factor or to find a value. Now, if we think about this, f of x equals negative 3x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus x plus 1. We're asked to find f of negative 2. Well, essentially what we're looking at is uh, the, f the factor theorem. And we'll get to that shortly. But it basically gives me the value c. So I can jump to synthetic division immediately. So I know that c is this value, f of negative 2. Well, negative 2 is the function's value, or the x value, right? My c value, actually. So my factor, if I were to write this, it's x minus c. That's essentially what I'm dividing by. And this information told me that. So we have to be familiar with that. When we see this as the x value, as the evaluating the function, we realize, oh, we change the sign because it's a 0. Remember, zeros are of opposite sign. All right, and now I can just write the coefficients. Negative 3, we have positive 2. But now I'm missing the x squared term. Because it goes from the fourth to the third, there is no second. So I have to have that placeholder. It has a uh, coefficient of 0. Then I have negative 1 and positive 1. Now we can go ahead and use synthetic division to find f of negative 2. Essentially, what that's saying is, what is the remainder going to be? Well, let's find that remainder. Let's find this value out here. Bring down that first term and multiply. Negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. 2 and 6 is 8. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. 0 and negative 16 is negative 16. Negative 2 times negative 16 is a positive 32. Negative 1 and 32 is 31. Negative 2 times 31 is negative 62. Negative 62 and 1 is negative 61. Essentially, what I found is the remainder. The remainder is negative 61. And this is what we're going to uh, call the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem basically says, 
if we have x minus c, then f of c equals our remainder. All right, if we recall that from the difference quotient. This actually turns out to be the remainder. Well, find f of negative 2. I found it. f of negative 2 equals negative 61, just by using synthetic division. That is the remainder theorem. It basically says whatever we evaluate the function at. Now, why would we do this when we could have just plugged in negative 2? Well, if we think about plugging in negative 2 here, we're raising it to the fourth power. So now we're dealing with 16, and we're going to multiply it by negative 3. The numbers can get big and ugly. If you look at it this way, yeah, the numbers started to get large, but not until the end. And these numbers weren't too unmanageable. So we can use our division to actually find any remainders. All right, <clears throat> let's look at the next example here. It says, is negative 1 a 0 of f of x? Well, this is another terminology that says this is the c value. Just like it said here, negative 2 is the c value that we want to divide by. Essentially, what this is asking is, is x minus a negative 1 a factor of this polynomial? Well, in order to be a 0, that means f of negative 1 must equal 0. Because we're talking about zeros. The y value is 0 when x is negative 1. That's our definition of a 0. And we can find that using synthetic division. So what I'm going to ask you to do is practice synthetic division. Do, the, do this as your quiz. This will be your quiz for this video. Take this, do synthetic division with this c value of this polynomial. Don't forget to have your placeholders in there and see if this is or is not a factor. All right, let's uh, discuss the factor theorem for a moment. The factor theorem. x minus c is a factor of p of x if p of c equals 0, if there's no remainder. So we can take the remainder theorem and just adjust it a little bit, fine tune it to say the factor theorem. The remainder theorem says if I divide p of x by x minus c, I'd get a remainder if this value is equal to something other than 0. Well, if this is 0, it means that we had even divisibility, no remainder. So let's look at this right here. f of x equals 2x cubed plus 11x squared minus 7x minus 6. We're asked, is x minus 1 a factor? Essentially, we're asking if uh, 1 is a 0. So instead of doing the long division here, since I'm dealing with a c value equal to positive 1. 1's a real easy number to multiply and do whatever we need to do with. So I'm just going to take that value and find f of 1, the c value. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because I'm only asked if this is a factor. Is x minus 1 a factor? I'm looking for a yes or no answer. So at this, if it's equal to 0, the answer is yes. If it's equal to anything else, it's not a factor. And a lot of times, we don't want to do the division with polynomials if it's not evenly divisible, because maybe we're just looking for those zeros. All right, so let's take a look here to uh, evaluate f of 1. Well, I put 1 in here. 2 times 1 cubed is 2. 11 times 1 squared is 11. 1 times negative 7 is negative 7 minus 6. Well. 2 plus 11 is 13, minus 7 is 6, 6 minus 6 is 0. The answer is yes. This is a factor because there is 0 as a remainder. Well, just for uh, practice, let's actually do this division. Let's find out what the quotient would be now that we know that it's evenly divisible. All right, so I'm going to use synthetic division. My c value is 1. And my coefficients are 2, 11, negative 7, and negative 6. Bring down that first value. 1 times 2 is 2. Combine these, I get 13. 1 times 13 is 13. Negative 7 and 13 is going to give me a positive 6. 1 times 6 is 6. 
negative 6, positive 6, a remainder of 0. So my quotient with a remainder of 0 is going to be 2x squared plus 13x plus 6. That is my quotient polynomial. And notice, no remainder, so it's evenly divisible. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I started the video by saying this is the tools that allow us to order, uh, solve higher ordered polynomials. Well, if we can find that factor, we can use some division to factor it out. We've actually broken this down to the point where it is a quadratic, something that we know how to solve, that we have different methods. We could use the quadratic formula to find other zeros, or we could complete the square, or we could, we could use many different methods that we've learned in the past. So this has been section 5.5, part one. Stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching.